Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to Tunneling Shortcodes in Midas GT SNX. So this is Harsha from Midas IT. Uh, like uh, this course is intend intended to show numerical num modeling techniques. User discretion is advised for their own uh, projects. So lowering of TBM shaft into tunnel, we are going to deal with the modeling and analysis. How are we going to run the analysis? What is the type of analysis? And uh, uh, what is the sequence which we are following? And then we will see the results. So basically, what is shaft? Uh, shaft is like an uh, uh, passageway, a underground uh, vertical or uh, inclined passageway. It's like an underground vertical or inclined passageway. It's, uh, there are like a, a number of shafts based on the purpose of the shafts. There are like in many types. Uh, like uh, what are the different purposes? Like for the construction of tunnel, example, TBM shaft, uh, uh, we are having a tunnel to be uh, excavated out and then we need to provide a TBM in the very first case. So for that, we need to go for a shaft so that's uh, we need to go for an entry shaft for the launching of your tbm so that's your uh, tbm entry shaft or else exit shaft and then uh, for ventilation of tunnels and underground structures and for access of tunnels and underground structures also as an escape route uh, as a drop shaft for the sewerage or water tunnel and mining shafts. So these are some main purposes of the shaft and uh, uh, based on these uh, um, like a shaft uh, purposes, there are many different types of uh, shafts and the construction methods. Now uh, I will show you what are the different types of construction methods and this will be, and then I will show you some videos. What are the different methods and uh, how we are going to uh, like simulate them in the software and what are we simulating them in the software? I will be telling you now. So the most common uh, shaft construction method for uh, from simplest to complex or so we can have trench boxes and then uh, uh, with speed slide rails and then uh, soldier piles and uh, wood lagging. Th basically, this is like uh, similar to our uh, deep excavation itself. And then uh, liner plates, pre-cached segments, so, uh, major important thing for fast and uh, uh, fast generation of your uh, uh, like TBM shaft. And then conventional excavation with the rock dowels and short creep. And then uh, sheet piles, second piles, real shaft, mechanized technique. So in the mechanized technique, uh, similar to TBM, we are having a machine called the SBM, shaft boring machine. Uh, I will show you a video how the shaft boring uh, machine works. And we can able to simulate them, uh, simulate them in the software, like how we can simulate a tunnel boring machine in the software. Um, yeah, let's, I will show you some uh, videos regarding the construction methods. So that you can able to correlate uh, to the original or uh, in situ case, and uh, what we are uh, simulating in the software can be very well known to you. So here you can see this is an, uh, a shaft diameter, and then uh, in the very first case, uh, we are actually providing uh, uh, excavation using a simple conventional machine. So uh, we are digging till uh, the soil layer. So in in this uh, technique, there is an uh, uh, underground rock, and uh, here, uh, like a, a second layer is a rock, and we are digging till the soil layer, and then we are uh, providing a concrete, just uh, pouring the concrete. It's like a, a cast in C2 case. So using a conventional machinery, uh, we are doing it. Uh, this is a reinforcement and then uh, we go for uh, uh, like a, a filling with the concrete. Similarly, we fill the entire uh, area like uh, using the concrete. So this is a simple uh, technique and a very vastly used technique. And then uh, later on, in order to have uh, excavation at the rock, we generally first use uh, our uh, uh, different techniques for uh, stabilizing the uh, like a rock in there and then uh, we go for blasting. So this is how we are stabilizing the underground rock by providing certain, uh, uh, like let's say a grouting technique or we are just, this is like a temporary support. And then we go for excavation. It's like a simple excavation using uh, uh, machinery. And then when we uh, go into rocks, uh, what we do is uh, we will blast them. So once we blast them, uh, these supports will be providing you um, like a temporary supports and then we we got uh, uh, rock bowls and then pre-cached segments so let's go on further 
So this is one sort of your uh, um, excavation techniques using a, um, like a conventional case. So we are using a precast and in, in the rock. So this is one sort of technique and I will be showing you a very uh, like a very advanced case that is a, a shaft boring machine in a shaft boring machine generally uh, uh, like a, it, it use uh, it gets used in the mining cases uh, because the mining case the shafts are more deeper like this shaft boring machine can go uh, to the depths of like more than uh, 2000 meters. So this is a machine similar to uh, your tunnel boring machine, but it's a vertical case, so shaft boring machine. So here uh, we can find uh, hydraulic jacks, like how we can find the same in the tunnel boring machine. And there are some grippers. So these grippers will exert force on the walls of your shaft and then it goes uh, down. And then uh, like it digs the, um, like a, it, the moment is not similar to your tunnel boring machine, but it's a different, um, like here like you can see it rotates and then it rotates in both uh, uh, along vertical axis and along horizontal axis as well. So that's how it does uh, complete, uh, it get uh, uh, excavates the complete soil surrounding over there. And then uh, I will show you how the short grid can be done. So once the muck uh, is removed, uh, like it's the complete of, uh, like uh, industry present in the underground. What it does is all the muck uh, which uh, have, uh, like uh, which comes out of the excavation, uh, which comes out of the cutter, will be taken directly to the top, uh, like uh, to the ground surface using the uh, conveyor belts. So here you can see uh, the muck is going out uh, to the ground surface. Yeah, and now uh, there will be uh, some machine uh, for short grading. So here you can see the layers. Uh, like uh, uh, we can e we can go for either precast segments or the short grade cases. Like here we can see in this machine there is a short grade uh, uh, machine, a short grade machine, and uh, which actually provides uh, the short grade uh, uh, the uh, like um, uh, ejects the short uh, short grade from the machine. So that's how uh, the concrete lining forms. So uh, this is uh, well known uh, for uh, for uh, like mining excavations where usually people go for very uh, deep excavations. So in the software, we can able to generate all those types of uh, machine, uh, like all those types of uh, um, like construction methods. So uh, as I said, that there are many purposes. I will show uh, like different models for each purpose so that you can able to correlate that for each and everything. So uh, for the very first, like uh, the TBM shaft, like the construction of a tunnel onto a TBM shaft. And then we got a ventilation uh, shaft for ventilation of the tunnel or underground structure and then for access of your tunnel or underground structure also as an escape route and uh, mining shafts as a drop shaft for sewerage or uh, uh, water tunnel. So now uh, I will be showing you some models so that uh, you can uh, uh, correlate with it. So let's say uh, here uh, this is a TBM shaft. This is what we are going to model today. Uh, in, what happens in here is uh, this uh, shaft will get uh, excavated and then once it get excavated uh, it forms something like this. I'm just I have hidden all your uh, soil layers. So this is how uh, the TBM uh, the, the TBM will uh, after excavation the TBM will be uh, lowered into the launching chamber and from the launching chamber uh, the TBM shafts from either sides. So that's how uh, the tunnel boring machine uh, starts from your uh, uh, like uh, entry shaft of your TBM. So that's how it starts and this is one purpose. And uh, for the second purpose we got ventilation shaft. So here we can see. So this is your ventilation shaft. Yeah, so the entire rock, let's say this is my rock and uh, uh, what I'm going to show you is the ventilation shaft. So here uh, we got a tunnel and uh, we got a uh, simple uh, like a very small diameter ventilation shaft and uh, we will actually in order, uh, like in order to have a protection so we provide a certain rock bolts and lining if necessary so uh, it depends on rock type and uh, purpose so that's how we proceed further and then we are also having one more shaft for uh, uh, like access to the tunnel so this is the shaft and uh, here uh, we got a uh, normal tunnel and then uh, let's say this tunnel is in the like in the inside the rock. I will show uh, the complete model as well.
yeah this is how it looks like and then here we got a, a tunnel and then this is how the shaft gets lowered so uh, there are different techniques for supports we got a concrete lining we got uh, like a, a rock bolts and uh, for uh, lowering for excavation to get started into the shaft we are having a retaining wall over here as well so in one single project you are completely uh, modeling everything so that all results will be there and uh, you can extract uh, the results of your own interest from different cases so that's how uh, there are different project uh, different uh, methods uh, of uh, this different purposes of shafts and that's how we can model it in the software And then what are uh, like uh, what are we considering in today's modeling? So we are going to consider a shaft tunnel intersection modeling and two layers of uh, moculum material, uh, concrete walls for shafts and tunnels, like uh, uh, tunnel linings basically, and a full phase excavation of tunnel and construction stage analysis. So uh, like uh, in uh, we are not considering uh, steel ribs or temporary supports, uh, no anchors or rock bolts, and uh, no construction sequence with respect to TBM or NADM. It's a just simple excavations. Uh, so these all the models uh, which I'm showing you uh, were made uh, uh, as simple as possible for the demonstration purpose. So I'm not using uh, any TBM or NADM as of now in this uh, modeling for tunnel excavation. And further in the results, we are going to look after uh, deformation behavior, uh, volume data export, plastic status of rock, and the structural behavior of uh, concrete walls and tunnel linings. So uh, uh, once again, uh, like, uh, like we got different workflow like every time every uh, like in every session i'm uh, shopping in this workflow as uh, this workflow is a main uh, for uh, any modeling in uh, in any finite element software so once again i'm focusing on the same so geometry uh, either can be imported or can be created import in the sense you can import it from uh, midas family programs or else you can import from uh, uh, autocad or um, uh, all the cad files such as a dxf dwg and there are many formats where you can import as well so that's the geometry import and then after import of the geometry and after creation of your geometry we go for materials so we at uh, like we assign certain materials to the geometry and then we go for property we uh, like uh, provide certain pro uh, properties to the materials which had been defined and then we go for meshing so uh, we mesh the uh, like uh, uh, with very low low mesh size at the point of uh, stress concentration and of course it mesh size towards the boundaries and then we got a low uh, loads and boundary conditions so these two are interchangeable so we can either apply loads on the geometry or else we can apply loads on the mesh as well so similarly the boundary conditions and then analysis get the results so this is a major workflow in any finite element software and uh, gts nx is no exclusion from it so this is what we are modeling today so we are going to model uh, uh the shaft and then we are going to model uh, like uh, TBMs, so not TBM, the tunnels. And uh, there is a full phase excavation which we are doing in this uh, session. So let's get into the software. So uh, the model type is a 3D and uh, just choose a 3D model type and the gravity direction automatically gets into Z direction and then press OK. So in the very first case, we are we need to define the outer line boundaries, uh, outer line uh, that is that means the boundaries for your uh, um, like vertical shafts as well as a tunnel and soil layers. So let's start with the shaft and then uh, go for uh, uh, X Y work plane that is horizontal work plane. So this is your horizontal work plane and just go to the top view. And I'm having a shaft of like around a 7.5 meter radius. So let's say uh, my shaft start, start somewhere over here and let's go for a radius of 7.5 meter and give the name as shaft and say apply. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, let's say my center location is uh, this and then uh, we are having radius of 7.5 meter. And then say apply. So uh, now we are going to translate this uh, uh, like uh, the circle into y axis. Let's say uh, I'm going to translate for two times, that is uh, 10 meters. 
two times for 10 meter distance. That's how I'm translating it. And then just say apply. Usually, uh, whenever you go uh, to the deep, uh, there are like a different uh, a diameters. The change of the diameter takes with because of uh, uh, more uh, um, like a change of your diameter. You need to divide. You need to model uh, another diameter as well. I will show why there will be a diameter change. So here we can. Here we see. So uh, in the very first uh, soil layer, I'm having uh, excavation still here. I will show uh, the shaft. I will hide the shaft excavation. Yeah, so uh, from here you're having one more step. So we need to we need to model uh, even uh, this uh, lining as well. So let's uh, model, and we know that uh, like the thickness in here is a uh, 300 mm. So let's uh, model one more uh, uh, circle with the 300 mm. And before modeling, uh, we we can intersect this one and delete the unnecessary lines. So just delete them using uh, the delete option in your uh, key keyboard. And now we go for 7.2 meter uh, diameter of another circle. Now we translate them once again. So uh, two times, uh, sorry, uh, 10 meters uh, distance and you're going to translate it for two times. And now we will intersect them once again. And now delete the unnecessary paths. So this is how uh, we had modeled it. And now we will uh, translate that these uh, uh, like a lines uh, to, 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 to the top and towards the bottom. Let's translate them. So uh, select the interior part. And then we are having a different lines. You need to select all the lines and then we will translate towards the bottom. Go for X axis and uh, just uh, move towards minus point uh, eight meters. So I will tell you why. Because our uh, our tunnel is going to shaft from, uh, start from here to here. So uh, there will be some protrusion uh, like uh, towards the bottom and I have just uh, translated them downwards. Now we will select uh, uh, another, uh, the top portion and then uh, we will select the direction once again. And then we will move to 9.2 meters. So now this is what happened. Now we are dealing with in, in a 3D case. So we had a, 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 like modeled in a 2D and then we have excavated, uh, like a, we have uh, uh, intersected them and then we moved up uh, towards the top. So uh, now we will be modeling a uh, tunnel. So my tunnel starts over here. Uh, let's provide, uh, uh, like let's go for uh, uh, vertical work plane. So this is my vertical work plane. My tunnel is of around 2.5 meter. Yeah. So this is my tunnel and I, we will be extruding them. So for, at first we will be extruding the shaft portion. So just go to the top and select all your uh, lines on the top lines. And then we, uh, we need to extrude them towards the top and the length is uh, like around eight meters. And then uh, we need to extrude uh, the bottom part. So this needs to be extruded for around 12 meters towards the top. Yeah, so this is our shaft geometry. Now we will divide them into number of parts and then we will excavate them in each uh, construction stage. So now uh, like uh, we need to extrude uh, uh, like your tunnel as well. So select your edge. So this is our edge and select the direction. We are going to like, let's say some random value of a 40 meters and then uh, we can cut the section. So this is how it is. And then now we will translate uh, both of uh, this channel on the other side as well, because we are having tunnel on uh, another side. Let's provide a value of 40 meters 
like a venue uh, so we knew the distance is like around 35 meters uh, from uh, here to here and then uh, of uh, like 75 meters mm, not not uh, let's go for some uh, uh, 60 meters we can provide a value uh, yeah this is this would be fine and then I will be copying it so I have a uh, mood uh, so you need to check the uh, method that's a copy and then the distance is uh, 60 meters so this will be in tunnel portion so now uh, we are going to cut the part of your tunnel which has been protruded into your uh, shaft so let's go for uh, cut so this is our target objects and uh, so let's this is our target object and tool object is this one so we are not going to delete the tool and we are just deleting the target so this is how it works and now target option and now the select tool option yeah so here this is how it works uh, the tunnel is uh, here till here and then tunnel is here um, I will show you the geometry what happened. So this is how we are cutting uh, the tunnel parts. Yeah, now uh, now we are going to model uh, like uh, we are going to cut the parts of your uh, uh, let's say my shaft and then parts of your uh, tunnel as well so that we will be having a, a generation of our uh, uh, different parts of your excavation for different construction stages. So let's go for uh, surface creation of a surface in a vertical plane and make face option so now uh, we will just translate them so we'll translate them uh, towards the top Uh, it's 17.2 meters and then just translate towards the top and then we will extrude them for every two meters So when, once again, I will copy them select the direction Copy and for every two meters that that two downwards so minus sign and then we can provide certain value six let's say and then we need to have uh, two uh, three more yeah that's it so this is how we are just moving the uh, translation options and then uh, we will be uh, cutting the uh, like uh, your complete uh, model using the tool surfaces so let's uh, consider all tool surfaces by using the intersection option and then just say okay so now uh, the shaft has been divided into two parts so this uh, each and every part will be excavated in different stages similarly uh, now we need to uh, divide the tunnel so let's go for vertical uh, plane and then uh, use a face and then check a uh, make face option and i uh, use this and create a face so now uh, we are going to translate the face so that it will uh, cut the uh, like tunnels and then we can translate the uh, like a, we can uh, use uh, the excavation of each part of your tunnel for different construction stages so just copy it and we are going to go for a two times once again go to side view so that you can have a clear cut idea 15 times and from here uh, let's say i'm going to model it for 15 times and then i will uh, uh, like use and i'm going to translate the surfaces for every 0 0.5 meter because uh, this is an intersection part of my tunnel and shaft where you can find more stress concentration so i need to have a very less excavation at this point uh, in each construction say, stage so select your uh, surface once again and now copy uh, like uh, uniformly for around 0 0.5 uh, meters and let's say three times okay we will go for some non-uniform and then two meters comma 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 
use 1.5 yeah this is good uh, like this is how we had generated them and now we will translate the same uh, surfaces on the other side of your uh, uh, like uh, a tunnel so what we do is we will go for translate option and then uh, we go for mirror method so we here we got a mirror method and then we are going to copy the objects and in the very first case we need to select the surfaces so we are having all the surfaces uh, are getting developed and then i'm going to choose a plane so let's select a 3d work plane and uh, first point second point and third point so this is how uh, we are generating the surfaces because this is a symmetric case i'm using the mirror image yeah we got surfaces on both the sides what we do is we just cut them using the solid option one solid and the two solids we are we are having number of surfaces so we use the intersect option to select all the surfaces and this geometry should be inside the tunnel yeah this is how you can find all the geometries uh, uh, like i got uh, uh, like you can find them got uh, like uh, cut into different uh, parts so these parts will be excavated in each and every step that's how we proceed further uh, yeah now we are going to model a soil so let's go for a surface so let's say my soil starts from here to here i'm taking some random value but in general uh, the soil boundary uh, should be uh, like uh, chosen in such a way that all the boundary uh, like uh, conditions provided on the boundaries should not affect the values of your tunnels or your displacements or your bending moments so in such a way we need to select our uh, uh, length of the boundary so in order to come to the uh, length of your boundary we need to do some parametric analysis or else we can directly do one uh, nonlinear or linear static analysis to come to a rough idea about our uh, um, like uh, let's say my amount of uh, dimensions let's say my dimension length and breadth so we are going to extrude uh, extrude for uh, first layer let's say uh, i'm going to extrude it for around 17.2 meters and let's provide the name as soil so we got two layers of soil uh, so that's why i'm extruding towards the top and then i'm extruding towards the bottom and later on i will cut at uh, uh, seven meter uh, like 10 meters of uh, this uh, like uh, from the top so that that means the first layer is of seven uh, like let's say around eight meters of my um, lay, uh, thickness so we are going to reverse the direction and just see yeah it's uh, it's always better to use the preview option before uh, extruding it yeah now uh, everything is going as planned and now what we do is we will merge the faces so this is like one single solid now and now uh, what we do is we will prepare a face so that that face can be cut at the depth of your uh, uh, your uh, let's say my layer so my layer will start somewhere around uh, eight meters from the uh, sorry around seven meters from the top first layer so i will translate this one for about uh, let's say 10.2 meters so why i'm 10.2 meters is uh, uh the the distance from here to here is 7.2 meters so that's why i translated from bottom to 10.2 meters so that uh, uh the top seven meters will be for my first soil so i'm just hiding my soil and uh there is no need for this one as well just hide and here i got a surface so what i do is i will cut uh, the surface of your shaft once uh, so here we need to def uh, define like divide your uh, shaft as well so i need to cut this surface and later on i will cut the soil so what we do is go to solid divide option once again and we have chosen the solid and that's your shaft solid and then the tool surface uh, we are not deleting the tool let's go uh, this is in the shaft and then just say apply so now similarly open your solid just select your solid select the surface and in uh, this should be saved in a geometry set of soil so that's how uh, you have provided and now the main idea in here is nodal connectivity so in order to attain nodal connectivity each solid should be in contact with your second soil so we can check whether they are in contact or not 
so here you can see only some solids are in a contact and the most of the solids are not at all in contact so here what we do is we need to uh, like uh, uh, use an auto connect option in order to make sure each and every solid is connected with your with your edges and solids or not so this is your auto connect option and the method we need to use here is a boolean operation so what boolean operation does is it will uh, cut the uh, solids out of each solid so that there will be having uh, some co-faces now i once again show you so here you can see uh, each all uh, the orange faces where you find uh, is like in a similar face or uh, similar face for the two adjacent solids over there uh, this is your orange faces so you can find that there is a connectivity for all the, the scenarios and now uh, our geometric modeling is done so what is left over in here is uh, the material definition property definition meshing loads boundaries construction sequence so let's go for uh, uh, materials now what i do is uh, i will directly import materials i will show what is the material property i'm importing so let's say i'm importing uh, steel and i'm importing concrete i'm importing uh, all the two layers as well let's say uh, import all so this is how I can import any materials which are already uh, modeled in any uh, other uh, uh, like um, a GDSNX model present in your software. So what we do is I'm having very first layer. This, uh, this is how my properties of my layers look like. This is the first layer. And this is the second layer, uh, sorry, uh, the unit weight, cohesion, uh, friction angle, and uh, the elastic modulus. So similarly, the second layer uh, here we got a more. Uh, this is high strength, uh, like a, a more uh, very dense uh, uh, solids, and here we find uh, the unit weight as well as Poisson's ratio. So this is what I'm considering in this uh, modeling. So now uh, we need to provide certain uh, material. Uh, so we already developed a material. Now we need to provide uh, uh, properties to them. So let's go for uh, like in the very first case, I need to define a solid for both your uh, layers. Uh, like now the very first layer is uh, dune sand. So provide that layer one. And now uh, we got second layer. Let's provide with the name layer two. So we are providing uh, a solid finite element so we got a different element so we can see here 1d element 2d and 3d element so since this is a 3d solids we are going to provide a 3d finite element the uh, element that is a solid and here we got 2d so now uh, we need to define uh, like a lining uh, for uh, like your tunnel for your shaft lining as well as for our uh, uh, intersection lining so at the intersection i'm going to provide a more thickness of my soil uh, like uh, let's say my uh, what i uh, uh, more thickness of my segments so go to shell in the very first case i'm having a thickness of uh, let's say 0 0.15 meter that is a 15 centimeter thick uh, tunnel lining and now uh, for shaft lining i'm going to have a 20 centimeter thick that is 0.2 meter and let's say at intersections i need to have 0.3 let's say so this is what I'm considering. So uh, all the definitions of your material properties as well as uh, 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 like uh, uh, the modeling of the geometry has been done. Now what we do is the only thing left over is the definition of your uh, uh, meshing. So what uh, in the very first case we will mesh the shaft. So let's mesh the shaft. So I'm providing a layer to property on a whole and later on I will change them. So hybrid mesh here, let's provide a mesh size of one meter. So we need to rename as well so that uh, it can have a, uh, like a particular uh, property or particular uh, uh, like uh, numbering from top to bottom so that it will be very much helpful for us while uh, providing construction sequence. 
so uh, this is how it we have done it and now we will select uh, uh, the solids of your tunnel let's provide a mesh size of 0.5 meter and let these are all, all the tunnels are present in layer 2 itself so i'm providing layer 2 property but from here uh, it's layer 1 i need to change the property of uh, to layer 1 later on so let's provide uh, the meshing first and later on we will change them So now the tunnel meshing is all, almost done and uh, we need to uh, change the property of uh, shaft for layer one. So here we got parameters. Go to 3D parameters and uh, select all the uh, like elements till first layer. So this is uh, all my elements till first layer. So I'm going to change the property to layer one. So that's uh, as simple as it. Now this is a layer one. Uh, I will just change to material uh, color. So this is layer one and from here it's layer two. So that's what I want and I can able to replicate them even after meshing. So what we do is we will change the name. So go to rename. Uh, and before uh, actually these two are of the same uh, uh, like excavation part. What we do is we will merge these two excavations. And now I just rename all of them. Uh, go for uh, renaming from the top. So this is my excavation one. That is shaft excavation one. So we need to go for descending order. So shaft excavation. Let's say apply. So from top to bottom, you can find uh, uh, shaft wash first step, second, and uh, uh, later on three, four. Uh, Five. So that's how it proceeds from top to bottom and renaming is very much important uh, uh, when you go for uh, uh, like construction stage analysis like uh, you considering shaft considering tunnel so it will be very much helpful for definition of your uh, tunnels construction sequence. So now uh, let's say this is my tunnels and I give the name uh, like uh, with the left side of my tunnel so it is uh, from y axis it is uh, from this is the first uh, excavation part, second, third, and so on towards here. So descending order, because the direction is of Y axis towards right side. So you need to go for descending order and give the name as a left uh, tunnel and say apply. Similarly, select all your uh, mesh sets on, on to the right. And here, no need for descending order, but you need to change the F coordinate axis towards y. Let's say this is a right tunnel. So now all the tunnel, uh, all the mesh sets and uh, the layer properties were being assigned uh, successfully. Now we will go for uh, uh, like generation of your uh, tunnel linings as well as shaft lining. So first we go for shaft. Uh, we are having an extract option. Choose the extract option. Here uh, we are having a face option, so choose all your faces. So here we got all of them. And now what we do is we provide shaft lining and always register based on your ownership and then just say, okay. So this is how it happened. And now we need to merge these two once again. Similarly, go to rename select all your um, mesh sets and we need to go f uh, again from top to bottom descending orders let's say uh, shaft uh, lining from top to bottom now again i will be providing you with uh, tunnel linings so go for uh, extract option and you choose face once again and make sure that intersection option is off. And I have chosen all your lines and no need for the surface. So this is what we have chosen. Yeah, so just provide with the name of a tunnel lining, the property of tunnel lining, use a registration of uh, uh, based on your ownership, just say, okay. 
so once again uh, like we haven't provided the intersection uh, property so uh, intersection lining property what i have provided is i have provided the tunnel lining so here all the uh, like uh, the properties are in here or is of tunnel lining but not uh, uh, intersection lining so at intersection we will be having a little more thickness let's say uh, i'm selecting uh, uh, those manually and i'm changing the property the, this is of intersection lining so now i will just uh, on yeah so this is how we have done it uh, the thickness in the intersection part is more when compared to thickness it, uh, in the normal tunnel part yeah now we will rename them so that i uh, will have uh, uh, like a more uh, idea about our construction sequence so this is along y-axis descending order left tunnel lining similarly a right tunnel lining with respect to y and its ascending order itself right tunnel lining so uh, most of our modeling is done we need to mesh our soil itself so we can go into uh, 3d uh, mesh one and uh, mesh two for layer one uh, you provide a layer one property and layer two you provide layer two property i have already generated uh, a model so i will directly open uh, the mesh model for entire uh, case so here the soil for uh, uh, like a, a layer one and layer two are already meshed and we got excavation parts of your shaft left and right tunnel excavations and uh, we are having a layer one and layer two and we're also having uh, the linings shaft lining uh, left and right tunnel linings so what we do is the, the the next step is the construction sequence so the major step in here is the construction sequence i will show uh, what we consider and how to consider in each and every step so as we seen in the construction method uh, of uh, the conventional case which i've so shown you in a video so uh, in this video we can find for uh, till the surface of uh, the first layer so this is our first surface what we have done is we have uh, like completely uh, like inputted our concrete lining in the very first before excavation itself so what we do in the analysis as well is we will provide a concrete lining in the very first stage before excavation till a depth of uh, 10 meters in the model so uh, sorry seven meters that's where our lining ends uh, sorry if that's where our uh, layer one ends so uh, seven meters in a very first stage so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to merge all the first layers sorry first uh, tunnel linings till excavation four so i have merged them so here you can see so this is the merged part at first it was like different uh, like how you can find in uh, five six seven so uh, it was different but i now merged all of them just select and uh, right click and you can find merge option and you can uh, do it as uh, as and how uh, it happens so just right click or else here right click and you can have a merge option so that's how we proceed and now what we do is we will i will provide you the construction sequence uh go to static uh, uh slope analysis we got a stage visit so before definition of a stage visits and algorithm of your excavation we need to provide certain construction stage so here the stage type which we are considering here is a stress type and uh, uh the type of the name which we are providing is a tunnel uh, shaft shaft and then just say add and this is your tunnel shaft and you can directly choose tunnel shaft from here so in this analysis case uh, we are having in situ stage and everything followed by uh, next and the very first uh, case, uh, like uh, idea is we need to have every uh, like uh, layers and uh, uh, the uh, like excavation parts all the soil related case in the in situ but there won't be any lining so the layers and we we are having uh, left tunnels and right tunnel this is all uh, only soil property and we haven't provided any lining in the in initial stage so shaft excavation so there won't be any lining face or uh, left tunnel yeah only this will be provided and here we have we are having uh, boundary conditions 
and sulfate yeah so now uh, what happens is the very first stage we are going to have uh, our first ton, uh, shaft uh, lining so let's go for shaft lining and we are going to add it in the very first stage till uh, the first lining is like till uh, layer one depth that is about 7.2 meter 7 meter depth so uh, we will be starting with position uh, like a um, layer uh, shaft lining one and then with shaft lining one in stage one itself so just say apply so only first lining has been added in a stage one so now uh, now we are going to excavate your uh, shaft uh, so remove them and here we are starting with uh, stage two and uh, the position is one itself that means we are having a number of uh, like we have provided certain numbers for your excavation so shaft excavation one two three and four so we need to start from uh, one and let's end for, uh, uh, like let's uh, end the entire thing so there is no need for uh, end position and we are going to start it in stage two So this is how we have provided the excavation case. And then now uh, we are need to provide uh, the shaft lining. So we are going to add it. And the start stage will be two. And the position will be Yeah, uh, one itself. So just say add. So here we can see, and we are not interested in this uh, A1, and then just delete the A1. So we are having A5, A6, A7, and uh, at the regular time where we are removing the shaft excavation itself. So after excavation, uh, we are having uh, uh, like a uh, the lining on the face of your tunnel excavation as well. So I have divided that uh, into tunnel face. So here we can find the tunnel face. So at, at first we need to add those tunnel faces as well. So tunnel face, left tunnel face and uh, uh, right tunnel face. So this should start from a one and uh, like in ninth stage. and just say apply so and now these linings has been added and these linings should be uh, like a uh, uh, excavated to start your excavation of uh, the tunnel so what we do is again uh, we will excavate the tunnel face left tunnel and uh, right tunnel face so uh, uh, what i have done till now will be shown to you uh, in the simulation stage or uh, uh, excavation sequence i will be showing you so that there won't be any confusion remove so this will be removed in a 12th stage and uh, stage increment will be zero so this will be start from 12 uh, in 12th stage and stage increment will be zero so we are going to remove uh, it so apply sand metals so all one two three of your tunnel uh, face will be removed i will show uh, once again so don't get confused i will show you in the simulation stage what i have done till now now left tunnel uh, and uh, right tunnel will be excavated so let's press r that means r means removal so this excavation will start from 13th stage and then in this uh, like uh, from the 13th stage itself left tunnel lining and right tunnel lining will also start so this will start from 13 and here we got 13th stage so let's say apply so here you can see uh, the tunnel lining will start in 13 stage in the, as, uh, in the same stage uh, the tunnel uh, left tunnel will is going to get excavated so uh, what you hear it means uh, there is an excavation part and there is no a place for uh, uh, like uh, soil to settle on its own because it's not an NATM sequence in here or there is no TBM sequence on, on the whole as well it's just a uh, simple model for demonstration purpose so uh, there is an excavation and at the same time tunnel lining is it that means i want i don't want to like lose the volume of uh, uh, the excavation part so that's why i have provided the lining as and when i have removed uh, uh, like uh, the excavation part so this is how it has been done i will just press okay 
uh, now uh, just go to stage and then uh, I will show you the sequence now so in the very first stage you need to delete like a uh, uh, clear the displacement because of self weight so here uh, you need to show the data for activation so show data activate and now let's see the tunnel uh, the excavation parts also I will show you uh, one minute I will show you the uh, material thicknesses as well so that you can able to uh, correlate very easily so in the very first excavation there will be layers and there will be uh, in uh, soil layers uh, sorry there will be soil layers along with uh, soil inside tunnel and shaft so just go uh, activation so in the next stage you are activated you have activated the concrete lining and then you're going to excavate the soil like how we are doing so till now the excavation has been done and now the second ring had been taken place and then we have excavated and the uh, tunnel lining had taken place it, sorry not tunnel shaft lining excavation shaft lining excavation and uh, here uh, we are having separate tunnel phase ac activation as well this is your uh, tunnel phase so even uh, these uh, thicknesses on your tunnel phase has been activated on the, both the sides so i will show you on one side another excavation so this is how the excavation had taken place and now uh, the excavation of your shaft is done now we need to go for excavation of your tunnel so in the very first case we are having concrete lining in here so i'm going to like uh, ex like i'm going to deactivate the tunnel lining so that's what i had done tunnel phase lining and then i will go to front view so that you can sorry side view i will show you on the left side uh, similarly this is what happening on the right side as well so excavation has been done and then intersection lining excavation intersection lining excavation intersection lining and then uh, there is uh, the tunnel linings so this is how it is being proceeded and uh, in both the cases both the tunnel lining uh, and to the left on to the right as well so uh, this is how you can simulate the excavation sequence very easily uh, like by just providing the manual uh, uh, algorithm in the stage wizard that's how the stage wizard will be very much helpful in order to generate the complex uh, tunnel uh, let's say not tunnel uh, let's uh, like uh, uh, the construction sequence very easily complex and uh, excavation sequence uh, now this is all done and then i will show you the complete uh, model and you can directly go to constraint and then say uh, auto constraint I have already generated uh, the constraint i will show you so this is how what it happens so all the vertical boundaries will be given with uh, uh, the uh, like normally fixed conditions and the bottom one will be given with the completely fixed in displacements and uh, uh, and now uh, i will just show you uh, the application of uh, weight so here is self weight is there and then just provide the z direction so this is here by default because you have selected the gravity direction in z in the initial setting just provide with the name uh, sw so that's what ha happens so if you're having any uh, external disturbances like uh, uh, machine loads or certain buildings over here so you can apply apply the loads of those buildings on the top of your mesh sets by just going to pressure load and I'm going to route to the top and I'm selecting a certain uh, uh, 3D element face. So here I'm having one building. So this is a random which I'm providing, but I'm not uh, using this for analysis just in order to show you how it can be done. So uh, here, uh, let's say my building weight, uh, like the load coming uh, on at this part is somewhere like around, uh, uh, let's say uh, 500 kilonewton per meter square. And you can just say, okay so this is how you can proceed and uh, but what happens is you need to make sure that uh, you have modeled the ton, uh, foundation as well because direct application of this much amount of load onto the soil uh, will be very much uh, uh, um, like a, uh, a, uh, like a not helpful in your case because the solution or the uh, solver of your analysis will get diverged when you use uh, this much amount of soil uh, like a pressure on your soil so if you are having your uh, concrete foundation or your let's say deep foundation you can model them 
along with the, the shaft and along with the load so that where you can find very best results and you can even find what is the effect of your excavation onto your surrounding uh, uh, foundation or the surrounding building if any so this is how it happens and uh, uh, now we will run the analysis let's just go to analysis and uh, here uh, we can have a construction stage and uh, you can directly provide certain name and uh, use the tunnel shaft and now go to analysis control use the first uh, uh, like a stage that is in situ stage for your k0 condition that means you're applying uh, the k0 condition in order to calculate the initial uh, stress in your soil or else you can use another k value uh, like you can directly use the k value uh, let, let's say if you're interested in applying the certain other pressures let's say retaining wall condition you want to apply uh, active earth pressure what you can do is you can directly use the manual k0 determination and uh, you can directly write your own values so by automatic it means uh, it takes uh, earth pressure at rest in the software Yeah, this is how uh, the modeling is done. And now we will uh, like directly solve the analysis case. Here uh, uh, we are having perform option and uh, you can choose the analysis case and you can run the analysis. So I have I had already run the analysis. I will show you the results. So we are having different excavation stage. In the very first stage, let's show you with the total translation so the uh, you can see uh, the tunnel lining uh, sorry the shaft lining is uh, very vulnerable over here you can have a more and more red displacement uh, i will just auto range it and i will provide you the animation so that's how you can proceed and uh, i will show you I will show you the uh, like a section as well and then I will show you the settlement how it happens in uh, real case as well add and then just say close and uh, always show edges so this is your part and I would like to show you so this is how uh, the tunnel along with intersection looks like uh, in this cutting plane and I'm just showing you an uh, animation so this is how it proceeds so here you can see an excavation is being uh, proceeded and uh, the contour you can find how the contour changes from starting to ending so this will be very much helpful in order to have your own uh, presentation so you can save this video and uh, later on you can uh, pr present it in front of your colleagues as well as uh, your uh, uh, managers and clients the main idea is for clients so and uh, now i will show you the results for uh, uh, like uh, let's say my uh, shaft sorry sh uh, the shaft lining structural behavior that means uh, shell element forces so we have provided a lining of like around uh, um, uh, 15 centimeters for tunnel lining thick and uh, for uh, a shaft we had provide 20 centimeter thick lining so uh, we will just activate the shaft lining So I will deactivate, this is how it proceeds. Yeah, so now uh, go to results and what we can show you is uh, shell element forces. And it is always uh, recommended that uh, to use a global rectangular or element rectangular, but it, you always keep in mind uh, the coordinate systems. So in here, I have chosen element uh, coordinate axis and you can find element coordinate axis. Uh, it is uh, like uh, like the Z axis is regular, like it is uh, always pointing perpendicularly outwards, but the Y and X axis are not uh, regular for each and every element of your uh, model so what you need to make sure is uh, what uh, in which element coordinate axis you're seeing the results so go for uh, uh, let's say membrane forces in x so here what you're finding is in element coordinate axis but i want to have in the global coordinate axis with respect to the axis which i'm showing you with my with my curve set and in the uh, properties tab you can find uh, general and the output CSYS is of a global CS. Let's consider global coordinate axis and say apply. 
so uh, the value in here is this is how you can find the variation so it is maximum at the top of your means at the intersection um, with uh, uh, like uh, the compression or um, uh, tension so you need to choose based on the uh, like um, you need to choose the compression or tension based on your uh, uh, like a, the sign of your egg case and here we can find so this is a negative uh, this is negative sign uh, in software uh, uh, like a uh, positive represents uh, tension and the negative represents compression and this is how you can find forces in each and every element now let's go for bending moment diagram so again this bending moment we need to have in global coordinate axis so uh, it's already in global coordinate axis you can find it and major important thing is the bending moment diagram at intersection as well as uh, bending moment diagram in the tunnel i will show you the difference so you can cut the uh, using the cutting plane diagram and you can find the results so uh, i will show you in the tunnel now hide the shaft lining let's say from right to left tunnel lining yeah so uh, let's go into the results i want to have a, a bending moment about y axis so in general again uh, uh, this is my global coordinate axis so about uh, the longitudinal axis and we need to have about uh, x axis let's see so i will show you uh, the cutting plane diagrams at both the sections at intersection as well as uh, uh, the normal uh, section let's say this is my first plane Uh, let's go to top view. And this is onto the top. And just say uh, with more divisions, let's say 50 divisions so that you can have a better understanding of the results. Uh, this is how it is like uh, you can take the values directly and you can uh, find whether uh, this is safe or not using your uh, uh, like um, let's say uh, like the cap capacity curves so uh, sorry for the trouble like the, uh, you can directly choose using capacity curves and for each section that's what uh, I meant and now let's go first the diagram for near uh, the tunnel intersection so let's say this is where i can find it and i can have certain other values and uh, both the values you can directly take the values and you can go for the, the capacity curves generation at each and every section so that's how uh, you can proceed for uh, uh, like uh, the coordinate uh, systems by using the global coordinates or uh, um, like uh, uh, local coordinates so the coordinate system should always be in mind to get the to extract the results and uh, now i al uh, already said i would like to show you the volume data exports i have already shown you many times and i will show you once again so uh, this is the volume data export for the construction sequence which we had considered uh, I, I will just say okay and then you can find the same in uh, in the uh, analysis folder where you have uh, created So this will be very much helpful like uh, uh, where you need to uh, this is like a, a bridge between your uh, contractor and the design engineer so in each stage what is the activation amount so this is the deactivation amount you can see this is the deactivated data and this is activated data this is a 3d element and you're actually removing like in a stage 2 903 uh, like a meter cube of volume you're removing that's what uh, it represents and you can see in each stage so you can find the volume in each and every stage and in the second stage you can find what is the area that uh, of your concrete lining uh, like area of your concrete lining uh, that is being activated in each and every stage so in the first stage you're activating and later on you're directly activating in the uh, uh, next stages let's say fifth stage and sixth stage and seventh eighth and so on so if you're having rock bowls you need to go to 1d so this volume data export will be very much helpful in order to know what is really happening in the site uh, 
so this is it from my end uh, like uh, uh, thanks for your very uh, like uh, patient listening throughout the webinar series and uh, i would like to uh, show uh, tell you about something so already you knew about license uh, authentication how to uh, like uh, check on your license if you're still having any queries you can uh, directly post us and uh, this is like a disclaimer uh, this course uh, actually is intended to show numerical modeling techniques and uh, user discretion is advised for their own projects and the models are made as simple as possible for the purpose of demonstrations and in modeling uh, always directly keep in your mind when you go for your consultancy projects it is always better to go for a gigo uh, and a case so garbage in garbage out and case means keep it straight and simple and thanks for your attendance actually thanks for your valuable participation so that may that means a lot because since you have shown more interested interest in the tunnel we have uh, uh, increased the topics as well uh, thanks once again for your valuable participation and uh, for any uh, queries uh, kindly send uh, uh, technical queries kindly send us to global support.midasuser.com and then uh, for india middle east and africa regions like send your license related queries to india uh, at the rate and other regions uh, for info at the rate